Hello, and welcome to another episode of Boundless Body Radio. I'm your host, Casey Ruff, and today we have another amazing guest to reintroduce to you now. Judy Wolf is a returning guest on our show. Check out her first appearance in episode 603 of Boundless Body Radio. Judy Wolf is a certified food addiction counselor and sugar certified and licensed through former podcast guest Benton Johnson. Judy has been in food addiction recovery for 33 years and free from grains, sugar, starches, and alcohol for over 19 years. Judy's passion and commitment to the field of food addiction came from both her professional studies and her personal success in keeping over 125 pounds off her body for more than 19 years. Judy has helped hundreds of individuals in the U.S. and abroad understand not only the nature of food addiction, but also, and more importantly, the way to recover from it. Whether underweight or obese, pregnant or post-weight loss surgery, these individuals have benefited from Judy's practical, no-nonsense, and action-oriented approach. As co-founder of Sugar X Global, Judy helped develop a system based on their CARE acronym as the foundation for addicts to grow, recover, and transform. Judy is also active in raising awareness of food addiction for the general public. Judy Wolf, what an absolute honor it is to welcome you back to Boundless Body Radio. Well, it's good to see you again, Casey. It really is. It's really it good. Is, it's you goaded me into coming back. You know <laughs> I sure did. If, if uh, The listener will remember on episode 603, you and I were speaking about food addiction and your personal story was so good. We got into the weeds of food addiction. I realized we were running out of time to really cover um, you know, sugar addiction, food addiction, your work with Global X. So I put you on the spot and asked if you'd come back. Then I put you on the spot even more when you said that you were thinking about starting a strength training program. And I said, cool, let me follow up with you in a few weeks to see how things are going. I get a message from you <laughs> like the next day or two. And you're just like, dang it, you're really holding me to this, aren't you? So you and I actually did a few sessions together. It was way fun. I had a great time. And um and um, I'd like to tell you that I did too. No, I did. I, I did have a, I did have a good time because, of course, what I'll tell you what I was looking for. I was looking for form, you know, because when I commit to doing something, I commit to doing it, and I will do it. I will follow through. But I, you know, I have some physical back issues, knee issues, problems, and there was no way I was going to start doing something without some help. So um, everyone out there, you know, if you want to start strength training, resistance training, you know, Casey gives a complimentary 30 minute, you know, visit, so to speak. And that's where I started. And then I asked him a couple more times because I really, like I said, I, I'm into form. I, I have a background of being a physical therapist. This part of it wasn't my, it's my, not my forte. I was a pulmonary specialist. I said, but, um, but you know, I, I didn't want to hurt myself more. And so everybody should know, Casey, you should know that I haven't missed or skipped a day. I do it twice a week. That's, that's what I mean. I do other things. I do water aerobics. I make sure to get my 10,000 steps a day and I do my back exercises and stretching and knee stuff. You know, I do all that you know, but my resistance training is twice a week, usually Sunday and Wednesday. Sometimes, you know, I may have to hold a day off or something and it might be Monday and Thursday or whatever, but I, I want you to know that I'm doing it. I'm doing wow. it, everybody. Am I loving it? No, I'm not, <laughs> it, but I'm doing it because I'm committed because I know, I know that it's going to help me. Everything I read, everyone I talk to in the low carb world, I mean, you know, I'm here to talk about food addiction, not about exercise, whatever, but they go hand in hand because we at Sugar X Global take a holistic approach and we actually talk about movement more than anything. Like we don't want people to go out there and start to, you know, put, put down the food and to start exercise. That would be a very stupid thing to do. That's what we believe. But movement is critical. You know, later you can add on the stuff that I'm doing, you know, you don't do that right away. So anybody out there, if you're listening, don't get too scared. We don't ask you to do everything at once. You know, it's little by slow. Everything is little by slow. So. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you very much for the kind words. And thank you so much for trusting 
me enough to do a few sessions. We had a great time. We're going to be able to deep dive into all of that. Absolutely love working with you. Uh, since you know you and I um, did a few sessions, we've also talked to David. I've, I've gotten to host him on the show. Had a wonderful chat with him. He did confirm that uh, you are very diligent in the way that you um, go about things and that you've been sticking with the strength training, which is great. Um, I do have to say, this is probably a good time to interject this. Boundless Body Radio is it, it is for mature audiences only. Please, if you have sensitive ears, you may need to be careful because last time Judy uh, really went off the rails and said doo doo. So we had to like find a way to 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 edit that out somehow. Uh, David also said doo doo, and we had a good chat about it. And he talked about Judaisms. What are what are some other Judaisms? <laughs> oh, Judaisms, huh? You know, you're catching me off guard. Judaisms. Um, life is in one hand, food is in another. That's a, uh -huh. probably a Judaism. Okay. okay, I can expound on all these afterwards, no matter what, NMW, I sign everything with that, that is definitely a Judaism, plan, prepare, protect, leave nothing to chance, I mean, that's probably a Judaism, and I'll talk about mush, gush, munch, crunch, sweet, sour, that's a Judaism, because, yeah. you know, I couldn't stop eating, I could, I, it was, in, I was insatiable. It's absolutely insatiable that I, I didn't know, even know what I wanted. I mean, you don't, and I diet, you, everybody here, folks understand I dieted my way up to 288 pounds. And what I mean is I was always on a diet from, from when I was, you know, I first, I hate to say this. I first started Weight Watchers when I was in seventh grade, you know, I mean, so we're talking my whole life, my whole life, you know, until I figured out that I had a problem with food. At first, I thought I was a compulsive overeater. Well, folks, I know I'm a down dirty food addict, but yeah. I also see the compulsive eating is part of the behavior. It's that's that to me is behavioral, but I have a substance use disorder, just like an alcoholic or a drug addict. And it's called food for me. And it's anything and everything, almost anything and everything. I don't like liver very much. <laughs> and I don't like beets for whatever reason. Other than that, anything's game. Anything's mm. game. So. Got it. Well, you shared your story with us last time, which I really appreciated, but I wanted to focus in on one moment because I feel like this could be any of us at any time. You talk about in, in your history, how you ended up losing a bunch of weight, you made some realizations about yourself, and there was one slip, there was one just little slip up that you did not recover from from years. And I think about, I, I mentioned this to David too, like all the people around me that I work with every day, I see every day, they know how I eat and what I do and all that stuff, and they probably know what they need to be doing, yet so many of them are self-sabotaging, -sab self-harming them, eating foods that literally make them miserable, that make them not think clearly or make their joints hurt. They know if they don't eat those things, they feel way better, yet they still do it. And I just think in your situation, you had one little slip that didn't stop. Can we go to that moment and like what yeah. you were kind of thinking and what happened? Yeah, I'm, I'm known, my partner, Anna, who I think you interviewed too, right? She's um, amazing, yeah calls it the 80 pound cheese curl because yep. literally I was, I had lost over a hundred pounds, kept it off for a couple of years, was doing great, doing my program. And in my living room one day with family and friends, I thought I could have one cheese curl. That one cheese curl literally led to an 80 pound bite and 13 years of misery, 13 years where I could not get my, my, my peace of mind, my serenity, my food abstinence back. That's what I call it. Abstinence, the food, you know, and I could not get that back until for me, I had to weigh and measure my food without exception. I had to give up. I didn't realize grains were killing me like corn, potato, you know, rices, stuff like that. I didn't realize Oatmeal. I, I was told oatmeal was a great thing. Uncle Sam's, whatever. And I, I didn't know what I didn't know until I put it down, you know, and, and in the past six years now, I know I can't have sweeteners. Okay. Cause I use that. Well, it's probably like a methadone for me, but it worked. It was fine. But you know, 
six years ago, I gave that up and now I have much more peace. It's, it's, it goes back to cravings. Um, it goes back to cravings, Casey. But I think some people don't even realize they having cravings because they're so used to just eating, 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 eating that you don't realize what's going on. I didn't. I didn't realize. Today, I know if I ingest something with, put it this way, if I have a craving, it's usually a couple of things. It's that I've inadvertently eaten something that includes one of those drug foods for me. Okay. I always go back and look at the food. Okay. The other thing is that euphoric recall that I, uh, you know, that I think people should know about because you can put your drug down, but if you go buy a place where you used to buy stuff, you know, uh, an alcoholic goes by a bar that they used to have thing, you know, that's where they would, a stopping place, a watering hole. Um, it brings back all these, like already my dopamine, my hit is happening in my head. A smell, oh my gosh, if I go into a certain mall and they have a cinnamon bun place, a cinnamon place, that wafting of air, of fat and sugar and cinnamon. Do you hear my romance, folks? Do you hear it? Romance, I'm romancing this food because that's what I do. I can't help it. That's where yep. my body goes. Yep. It, it, it's just, that's what euphoric recall is, is all about. And I can't, mm. I cannot stop that. I, what I, I'm powerless. See that, that is when I am powerless over something, but I'm not helpless because I have enough experience now. I know that Judy run the other way. You're not going there. You see the difference, but I am powerless over there. I can't help that my brain goes in dazzle, frazzle, fireworks, light up. I can't help it. I just can't yeah. help it, you know? So interesting. So so the 13 years that you're describing of, of misery, oh. what, were the, what were the implications of that? Like, what, how did that manifest as misery? Did it affect your relationships? Was it just your relationship with yourself, your self-confidence? I mean, what, what? how did that manifest for you in those 13 years? Everyone. Everyone was touched by it because that's when I felt like a piece of doo-doo. Your self-esteem gets dumped. You know, I mean, I was on top of the world looking like, in, I mean, I was in a body that I could never have imagined before. Now, understand, folks, I had been in that body before, but for a very brief time, nothing like what I'm talking about with two years of solidly being okay, being out of the food. I wasn't on a diet. I was on like a food plan for a life type of thing until I had the cheese curl. See, there's a big difference. You know, I wasn't yo-yo dieting all my life. I yo-yo dieting. Every time I diet, I'd gain even more weight the next round, the next round. And then I'd be on another diet. I mean, I never felt good about myself. And when you don't feel good about yourself, how can you like be present for other people? I mean, my kids, I mean, Dave talks about that in his interview. I think I talked about it before that, you know, I, if I, got the pizza one night at this particular place, or if I got the Haddock European, I was a different woman. You know, I was a different woman. It would change my personality because I didn't feel good about Judy. You know, if Judy doesn't feel good about Judy, how can I take care of anybody else and be present? And it takes away your clarity of mind. It really does. You know, uh, uh, these substances are killing us, are killing us. I wonder, you know, I wonder about difficulty in school and certain learning differences. And my kids have learning differences and I don't even call them disabilities. They're differences. I advocated for them. It may have been what I was feeding them that could have contributed to that also. I think I think there's certainly genetics involved with that. Don't get me wrong, folks, okay? I'm just like I feel genetics are definitely involved with food addiction. Like we are predisposed, it is predestined in our genes. However, we know today that we can change that, right? With epigenetics, right? We can change what the way our mapping is. We can actually change it by our actions and what we do or what we ingest. So, you know, that's kind of a little explanation of science for people. I won't go much deeper because 
I'm not into that. Uh, I, I love that. I think that's a really great way to think about it. Um, I did want to ask you about something we talked about last time, which was like the kind of red light foods, yellow light foods, green light foods. Now, you and I kind of agreed that where we are on our journey, no, there's no yellow. It's pretty much red or green. The yellow, for me, leads to wanting the red foods. It's easiest if I just avoid yellow and red and just consider it all red. I'm assuming, since you've worked with so many people, but you also work in with food addiction primarily, that most people that you work with are kind of in that way. Is that correct? Or what has your experience been like um, working with people? Can 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 most yeah. people, some people moderate? Do they have yellow foods that they can have? If I truly believe that if you are addicted, moderation does not work. Abstinence is key. However, I think there are drug foods, like certain foods that probably 99% of the people who are food addicts need to avoid, like refined sugars, you know, high fructose corn syrups, uh, that kind of, you know, highly processed stuff that our body doesn't recognize as food. It just is a hit. That's what it, I think it, it happens. It becomes a hit. But I said, there are some people that certain things could be a trigger food. I'll give you an example. I have people who say, you know, a yellow light food to them is nuts. Okay. I mean, like it, it, they could have it on their plan, but it creates a problem. Personally, anything, you know, I heard this from Bitten and I love it. Anything I can't cut with a knife and a fork shouldn't go on my body. Okay. And, and another product is pork rinds because they kind of, you know, they are made for that crunch and munch and gush and mush in your mouth. You know, those are trigger foods for some people with, you know, they can do okay with them, um, but but they're longing for more. They're longing for more. But so, I mean, yeah, you know, people, you know, Casey, if you have someone come to you and, you know, they're drinking two, two liter gallons or whatever, it, it, soda, pop, sugar coated, you know, how can you like take everything away from them in their life that doesn't have any sugar. So, you know, you might start and say, well, could you try to just like get rid of the soda, get rid of the pop, eat anything else you want just to get a start, a head start to see you can even do it. I mean, it's really hard to go cold turkey, cold turkey. I mean, it's what I recommend as the easiest, rip the Band-Aid, and then it's you're just so much better off because you get through a really hard withdrawal. It may be six days, four days, six days. It could be three weeks for some people. And then there's that euphoric recall and the other stuff that keeps uh, coming down the road. But you know, if you keep hanging on to your drug, to me, you're just going back. I call it the withdrawal loop. Like everybody I know, a lot of, well, not everybody, lots of people I know in my program, you know, in, in our, on our platform, every six or seven days, they pick up. Well, I call that the withdrawal loop. They just not getting through withdrawal. They're in continuous use. That might sound awful to somebody like, oh my gosh, I've given up da, 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 and I'm in continued use. Well, yeah, because you're not getting out of that withdrawal loop and it puts you back to day one. I don't mean day one, like punitively, but I mean, day one where now the dopamine hit is back, you know, you're looking for the brighter, shinier things in your life. And, um, you know, it's starting all over to day one of withdrawal. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I don't know if that explains, but I mean, there are, there are drug foods and then there are some are trigger foods to different people. And I think sometimes people look at those as their yellow foods. Right. And personally, I can't have yellow foods because they lead me. I can't stop obsessing. I mean, this is the difference between harmful use and addiction. I can't stop obsessing and compulsing about when I'm going to get my next potato chip bar or whatever it is. OK, my next it, which is a hit for me. OK, I mean, that's my hit. So, uh, you know, why go there? I don't want to go there. I, yeah. I like peace and calm and serenity because we, we talked about before how it affects other people. Well, 
if I'm peaceful and I'm calm, I can deal with anyone or anything. I mean, no matter what is where I talk about no matter what, I don't mean just the food, no matter what, I'm not going to eat this or I'm not going to eat that. But no matter what, I'm not going to lose my cool. Okay. Um, no matter what, I'm not going to go lash out at somebody and react in a situation. I've learned to respond, which is very different than reacting. You see? So that's where my Judaism of no matter what comes in. I mean, a lot of programs use that term. It's not copyrighted, you know, at all, but it's everybody knows that's part of me because I sign literally, Casey, you've gotten emails from me. How do I end it? Every time. Every and end on you, right? Every yeah. time. Yeah. It's like Every some time. people, it's somebody, it's just so funny. My husband went to synagogue the other day. I wasn't there. Somebody was there that I had been conversing with email. And he said, do you know what NMW means? Because I <laughs> see it on everything, you know, and they're not a food addict. They don't, I mean, they know what I do, but they, they, it's so funny. It's so funny, <laughs> but I'm happy to explain it to anybody. Cause it, it, I, I write that to my kids. Cause you know what? There's a lot of times I like, I don't like what they're doing, but I'll love them no matter what, yeah. I'll write, no matter what, love you, you yeah. know, whatever. Wow. Okay, that was a really good segue for something else I wanted to ask you about. Last time we mentioned bliss points and what that is. What, what you're talking about, how difficult it is, the cravings. It, if if I didn't know any better and you had not said food or sugar or anything else, I would think you were talking about drugs or alcohol, something much harder that was driving a response that is very, very strong and, and driving you towards doing something that would eventually be harmful to you. And, and again, I don't think the idea of food addiction is quite out there as much as any of us would want it to be. But we talked about Bliss Point last time. Why is it that we're so addicted to certain foods? Why? What, what makes everything in the center part of a grocery store look so good? Well, bags and boxes, they make them pretty, right? I mean, right. I mean, on the outside, if you take a kid down a cereal aisle, Okay. I mean, I don't go down cereal aisles, but once in a while I, I have to cut through the store to get to something I forgot. Okay. And you look at all the bright, shiny colors on packages and you know, you know what I mean? Like the foil, the, the and, and the toys and the, you know, all that, all that, all that stuff, you know what I mean? Like puzzles on the outside or, you know, what kid wouldn't want to look at that to get to, what's inside, right? And and the bliss point refers to, generally speaking, the exact amount of fat, salt, sugar, you know, that unami together that makes a tsunami, you know, that you really want to eat it and you can't stop. And there's a great flick out that we use and we teach and um and it's about the bliss point and it's this gentleman and i i just think of him and i cringe i cringe because because he he'll talk about oh you know like prego products there are like 50 billion now they used to only be one or two right and now they're literally i mean he's been a creator of that i believe and you know and that's using the bliss point to get a certain taste so that you want more and more and more. And he says, oh, it's not addiction about addiction. It's about, it tastes good. And he does it with a sneer and a snicker. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean you know, he's making a bundle. These, do you realize that people are, you know, I mean, we have food engineers out there who are engineering our brains. They're engineering right. our brains and they get paid thousands of dollars to do that you know to hijack us to hijack our brains and I and I think of I my heart still goes out to the kids I can't help it Casey because I don't know about you but I see more and more toddlers young kids three four five who are obese I mean overweight now understand everybody just because you're overweight or obese does not mean you're a food addict absolutely not you know, there are certain cultures, you can be metabolically healthy inside, 
you know, and look heavy on the outside and be absolutely fine. You'll never get diabetes. You'll never have a problem. You, you agree with me. I mean, right. There are people like that, but, but when you see these kids now, and this is, this is a fight that Dr. Robert Lustig is talking about all the time in his books. His last book was metabolical is, you know, five-year-olds with fatty liver disease, fatty liver disease non-alcoholic if they're not eating alcohol they're eating sugar they're eating highly processed foods my heart breaks because i was one of those kids who's a food addict young didn't know it of course you know i see one of my grandchildren right now is going to be a food addict i cannot i i can by the behavior i see the seeking behavior that i see and there's nothing you can do about it once yeah. the once you introduce the drug in your body, if you are kind of predisposed to that, then that is a setup to having a problem. And that's what I believe kids are being given all these foods that are, you know, made to the bliss point plus, how can they not? You know, and, and I think even if you're not predisposed to it, I wonder what's really happening in our bodies now because our bodies don't understand how to process processed food. I mean, highly ultra processed food. I mean, understand milk is processed. I mean, you do realize that, but so I don't want to get people to under, understand the terminology, but I'm talking about the ultra processed foods. I have a family member that says they're doing keto. Uh, keto to me means a hundred things to a hundred different people. I mean, if you're a person who has a, who's a food addict, who uh, you might be a food addict, I think is a food addict. You know, if you're eating keto treats, they're processed, they're highly processed foods. I don't ingest stuff like that. I mean, I'm a person that has, you know, vegetables, a protein, and cooked vegetables and uncooked vegetables. And that's about it, because even fruit kicks me off. Okay, once in a while, you know, I might have a few blueberries, but I truly, I have to tell you folks, I want more. Yep. And as soon as I eat something that I want more of, I have to be very, very careful, yep. you know? Well, it's and interesting. You mentioned the combination of those things, making the bliss point with the salt, the sugar, and the fat. If you think hard enough, you will, you cannot think of a situation where you would find that in nature. You don't get donuts and pizzas and burritos <laughs> and all these amazing foods in nature. Th that is a combination. The closest thing we get to that is a nut, I want to yep. say, okay, yep. is a nut. And that's why I think it's a problem to people, going back to people like at Sugar X Global, you know, where um, I have somebody, you know, we've, I mean, you know, in, in our, on our platform that realizes they can't have pork rinds and they can't have nuts and coffee is a problem to some people and not the necessarily the caffeine but it's what they put in their coffee is a problem, okay? And some people, it can be the caffeine, understand that too. I mean, I drink decaffeinated coffee. I gave up caffeine years and years ago and that was horrendous to give up. That was probably my worst thing. I mean, I, I felt like I was in a daze for three to six months. I'm not kidding you. Wow. You know, I mean, I was, I was drinking eight or nine. I, I worked evenings, three to 11. And I, and I was, you know, I, I had a lot of coffee, eight, nine cups of coffee a day, caffeinated, caffeinated, mind you. So when I went off of it unexpectedly, it was un one of those unexpected things too. Um, I suffered. I really suffered. So I understand, yeah. you know, yeah. so, so it's, wow. diff it's different, you know, each of our bodies, that's the one thing at Sugar X Global we talk about is each body is a different chemical factory. We don't tell people what to eat. We do now, which we didn't even start out with, but we do have like an elimination plan now, a get out of the food program that um, you can go to our website. I think it's $27 if you're interested in it. And it's like an elimination. And then after 21 to 28 days, you literally start adding like five grams of carb at a time. And you really watch how your body responds because that's what makes the difference. Do you start obsessing about it? I've had people, you know, like 
go off of fruit because we don't recommend fruit during that time and just come back and have a blueberry and say, oh my God, I didn't realize what this did to me. I had a woman from Mexico um, who, who wanted to have beans in the worst way. And so when she started to, uh, you know, she did the elimination thing, she did great. And then she decided she really wanted to have beans. So she had a very small portion of beans. And you know what she said? She would never eat them again. She got bloated. It made her, it made her ill. It made her ill. I mean, this is her culture, her culture. I mean, she wanted to get back and I understood that. And I said, well, all you can do is try. We don't tell people don't do it, you know, try, you know, and she came back and told us in a group, like, I will never do that again. Right. I, it, it, it's amazing. So, so, you know, we have that available to people. I mean, we work with people with it at Casey, you know, because everybody comes where we all come from different places and spaces and different sizes, different shapes. We have anorectics. We have, you know, binge eaters, whatever, you know, it's not, it's the obsession and the compulsion that makes you the addict. Mm. Wanting the brighter, the shinier, the more, the better. Yep. That's what people want. Got it. Yeah, that's so helpful. What an amazing tool for somebody. I want to take some of that practical information and especially like the PPP acronym. And I want to time travel magically back to that time when you had the cheese curl. Now, if I told you at that time, hey, Judy, this is going to kick off a 13 year event of you being miserable, you probably would have said, oh, wow, thanks, dude from the future. I appreciate it. I'm probably not going to have this cheese curl, but, but, you know, it, in the moment, it's just, I'm just going to have this one. And that's a really <laughs> rational thing. So using something like, you know, what, you know, now the PPP system, like how, how would you have coached yourself in that situation when it's like, it's just, it's just one, it's one cheese curl. Right. Well, I would have had, we do something called, we, we are trademarking something called recovery protection system and our RP system involves a cue, a custom and a consequence. Okay. And I know Dave talked about the trigger free triangle on his thing, but on that card, like I would have a card that said, you know, have one, that might be the name of it. One bite, have one bite. Okay. And so I would work that through today. Okay. Like if something comes to me, you know, I, I would, I would work it through. So, so my cue would be, I can have a bite of that. You know, my, my head goes there. That's my head. Okay. That's my cue. Like you want one, you know, my red dog, which is my addictive brain is going. Yeah. 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 You know, you want one, you know, my blue dog, which is this area of my brain where I can think says, do you remember that what happens when you have just one? You know, really, is that true? You think you can really have just one? Okay. So my custom, if in the old days, when I would have just one that led into a binge, okay, would be, what would it be? It would be, I'd have something that would trigger my thoughts like, oh, I can have another and another and another. So then the whole sleeve of whatever's gone, okay. And um, and then, um, well, since you had that, you might as well eat, well eat this, that, and the other thing, and you continue on, you know, so that would be my, my custom was I would never stop, right? I would never stop. And what would my consequence be? I'd feel like a piece of doo-doo, okay? Um, I'd probably feel bloated. I'd feel like throwing up, but that didn't matter. I'd still have more, you know? Um, you know, I mean, the list goes on. Okay. I probably wouldn't sleep as well that night. I'd wake up in the morning with joint pain, um, lethargy, wouldn't be able to get my work done as efficiently as before. I mean, it carries over. It's not just in the moment. Okay. So, so you really work through what's your consequence. Okay. And then I would look at the trigger free triangle. Okay. Now what was involved there was the debate, romance, guilt. Well, I debated, should I or should not take that first bite? So certainly there was a debate going on. Did I feel guilty? Absolutely. Right. And what did I romance like, oh, yeah, now I could have this or I could have that. OK, so you see how you can work it. That's the first you flip the card over and now you have the same cue. One bite. Right. The same cue. What's my new custom? My new custom is I get the thought. I pause. I might 
do some deep breathing in the moment. I may um, pick up the phone to call a buddy, you know, somebody that will coach me through or talk to me. I can, I can tell on myself. In other words, I can tell on red. Red is hounding me right now. Okay. I can call. I could get on our platform and DM somebody, or I could write something in tell on red or the commitment corner. I'm wanting to eat. I'm not going to eat. You know, I mean, there's always, you know, there's always somebody in the world awake that usually sees it and will respond. And um, what else will my new cons my new custom be? I run the other way. I mean, that's what I tell people. Get your first thought, run the other way. Have a no food safe zone in your house, like a bedroom. That could be where you never bring food into that place. And I would take my cell phone with me and a book with me so that I could you know, and maybe my journal, so I could journal. There's so many things. I could go out for a walk. I could just get out of my situation and just say, adios, everybody, I need a break, you know, and go for a little movement. So you see what I'm saying? So that would be my new custom now. So then what's my new consequence? My new consequence is I didn't pick up that bite. I don't have to feel like a piece of doo-doo. I'm not going to have any inflammation. I'm going to sleep well. I'm not going to feel like I need to go throw up but eat more. You see, it it it's there's this whole ricochet effect. Now, that side of the card involves the three Ps, plan, prepare, and protect. So if you take something like, um, you're going to start a new food plan. I, I like this as the analogy to use, okay? I'm going to start a new food plan. So, um, okay, so I'm making a plan. I have a plan. I have my plan. I'm going to have a new food plan. So my first plan to that is I'm going to make a grocery list so that I can get the food I need. Okay. Then I'm going to, you know, prepare. Okay. So what am I, how am I going to prepare? I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to buy the food. I'm going to come home, shop, shop, dice, slice, do whatever I need to do with it. Right. And so that I can have the meals that I said that I planned. Okay. On my new food plan. And then how would I protect my abstinence, because it's plan, prepare, protect. Well, I'm going to protect it by um, sitting down, having my meal in front of me, enjoying it, you know, and that's how I'm going to protect myself. Do you see, you know, with the, with the bite, it's really the same thing. How do I plan? I know that if I get that thought, I'm going to run the other way. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to do something, you know, you know, how do I prepare? Well, I have buddies, I have speed dial on my phone. I, you know, there's all sorts of ways you can use this material, okay? And how do I protect myself? I may have run to the room. I may have taken a walk. I, you know, I'm not eating that no matter what. No matter what is a very big message in my life because I'm a low bottom, high maintenance food addict and a person of more. And I know that today. And you know what? I don't want to go back to where I was. And that's why, you know, I mean, I have my own program for myself, okay? And at Sugar X Global, what we've done is we've taken the best of both worlds, what I believe is, you know, because there's the 12-step model. You've heard about Alcoholics Anonymous. There are lots of programs for food out there, you know? Um, but you can't coach anybody in that. You can't do what's crosstalk. Like you can listen to somebody and you can niche, nod your head, or you can go like this, but you can't respond back to them, for example. Okay. And also when you talk about whatever you're talking about, it has to be clearly about the subject like alcohol. If you're an alcohol, an AA, or if you're an OA food, you know, we're at Sugar X Global, we can talk about anything on anything's on the plate, any, literally anything goes. You know, you want to talk about your menopausal health, you can talk about that. You know, no problem. You see what I'm saying? Also, we it's run by coaches or peer leaders, you know, peer group leaders. So who have experience and are exposed to this. So, you know, I might say to you, Casey, you bring something up to me. OK. And um, meanwhile, it's um, it's Joe's over there. Deepest, darkest secret. But he would never mention that. But you are. You mention it. And I'll say, Casey, you want to talk about it? 
you know, because I ask you, do you want me to coach you? I mean, you brought it up. So obviously you probably do. But, you know, I kind of get permission because I don't want to overstep my bounds, you know. And meanwhile, Joe's over there at the seat of his pants, you know, listening to everything we are talking about. Because he knows now there's someone else out there that has the same problem. Mm -hmm. And there's a solution. There might be a solution. There, you know, like like this is not to be shamed or feel guilty about. Because, you know, shame and in, in, shame is intrinsic. It's so deep. It holds me back in certain things. I'm working on myself all the time, Casey. I'm not cured. My addiction's never going away. That's what we believe. We can put it in remission. You know, we can lie red dog down and kennel him. But he's going to pop up every once in a while. I acknowledge my red dog every day. The first thing I say when I wake up is, how am I going to remain abstinent today? That's my mm. first thought. You know, now, now everybody out there, you might think that I have a boring life. And if that's all I think about, I don't, I have a much better life now with the, my rigidity, with my rigidity, with my food and my boundaries, because I get to live life in between, because you have to understand that every moment before all I thought about was my next fix my next taste, munch, munch, push, push. And, and it's what I just said to you. That's what it's about. And so we, you know, we deep dive into this stuff with people where they want to deep dive. That's what we do. And, and the beautiful thing at Sugar X is that the three of us, Dave, Anna, and myself, I mean, you know, I'm the old bag. I'm the kind of the old lady. Dave's a young man. No, I mean, you know what? 36, he'll be 37. Anna's, you know, between the two of us, she's, you know, in her later 50s. And we also come from different places and spaces, each one of us. So we bring something different to the table. And you get choices because, you know, if you don't like me, you can go to a meeting that David's running or, you know, Dave's running or one that's Anna's running. And, and also we have so much on our platform. People don't, it, you, it, it would take you days to get through. We have inspirational music. I mean, we have book reviews. We have um, little tidbits. We've done challenges, like five-day challenges that ran for like, uh, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. We, we've we broken those into little pieces and segments so people can go and watch that. I do a corner called the three Ps where I do like a, you know, maybe four to six minute video and I discuss three Ps. Like I started with plan, prepare, and protect. But I've done things like poof, pizzazz, pajamas. And I relate that to recovery with abstinence. You know, I relate that to food addiction somehow. And it's great. Like if you're feeling like funky and, you know, you can't sleep or something, you could go and listen to a three P's for five or six minutes to get a boost because you're another addict's talking to you about addiction, you know, who gets it. And that's the other thing, Anna, Dave, and I get it because we're all, we happen to all be addicts, but we all have different backgrounds. I mean, Anna's a primal health coach, you know, I, I'm, you know, she and I met through HMA, which is Holistic Medicine for Addiction for Bitten Johnson. That's how I met Anna, you know? I mean, so, you know, like, and, and it's just amazing because I haven't met her yet in person. Never. <laughs> wow. I've never met her. Dave has. I've never yet met her in person. I thought I was going to go to England in May for the symposium, but I'm not going to be able to go. Oh, dang. Because of some, you know, health reasons in my home. So I don't feel comfortable leaving here for the time. Okay. So I, I thought I was going to meet her actually in England because she is going to represent us for sure. You know? Oh, very cool. Yeah, that's great. But I'll be there virtually. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely, anybody out there interested in food addiction, Check out um, the, um, I, you know, I can't think of the exact name of it, Casey, but um, the point is, is it's on May 19th, I think, if that's a Friday, okay? And it's um, just before the public uh, health collaborative that England puts on. It's in the same area, and it's a day of people just talking about food addiction and trying to come up with a consensus of what should it be called, because- 
sugar addiction, food addiction, highly processed food addiction. It, it's all hedonic. I mean, I mean, there's all different, you know, who knows? And really the greats, the literally greats are going to speak there, but mostly like the scientists and the doctors, you know, like, like Robert Lustig will be there. Vera Tarman will be there. Um, you know, I mean, the, the greats, the, the, the really awesome. cool people. So anyway, so, you know, it, it, I, David said this once and I loved it and it has to do with Sugar X Global, going back to that, is he said, we're really a one-stop shop. We have everything you can need, you know, um, you know, it's a subscription model. Um, you know, there's different alternatives. We have higher level programs. We now have three levels of programming, you know, come to circle, which is the first level. And then you learn and you, and then you see what you might want to do later. You know, then we have something called recovery accelerator, which I am teaching right now. And it's a deep dive into your behaviors because we addicts have a certain personality, you know, you know, like when you come in, the food is 90 to hundred percent of your problem. Okay. That's, that's the fact. And I understand that, you know, we want to lose weight. We want to feel good. We want to get health. Okay. But once the food is down and you figure that out, it's only 10% of the problem. Then 90% of you is left. Okay. And you got to, you know, through education and connection, you know, you've got to deal and deep dive into yourself and your behaviors of what made you tick. What do you want to change? Who are you really? I mean, I still work on that. And so that's what I, that's an 18 week special program, higher level, you know, co definitely costs more, you know, but it's a deep dive and we only allow 20 people in that. And now we've just started people who have graduated from that, you know, finished that, who wanted more, want to be their even best selves, like even better. They're doing high performance coaching with Anna now. We just started a group for that. So it's kind of cool, you know, because it's, it's so amazing to watch people grow, recover yeah. and transform. It is just absolutely amazing. You know, so cool. it like serves my heart. I mean, I'm here to, Dave, Anna and I truly, we went into this and our main goal was to eliminate the shame, the guilt and the stigma of addiction because it should be a common word. There's nothing wrong with being an addict. You don't have to call yourself an addict. You can say, you know, um, you know, I have an addiction problem. I don't care what you want. You, you do what you want. I call myself a food addict because I know deep down that's truly who I am. That's my first base. You know, does that hold me back? No, I went back to school because of it, I think. You know, if anything, I mean, you know, because I got the food down, I had clarity of mind, I could go back to school and get educated again. And so I, you know, I was in the first class of the food addiction professionals to be certified. And then I did Bitten's first class in English and holistic medicine for addiction. I mean, if anybody told me I would be here today, I'd look at you and laugh. Gaffaw. I, I would, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't believe you, you know, and here I am, you know, creating a business we created a business from nothing from nothing you know from what our beliefs were and what we were taught and what we lived and how hard it was being an addict and we've we we hand it to everybody on a silver platter literally our experience and we do it in a fun likable way i mean am i morose am i boring i don't think so you know, <laughs> absolutely and, not. And, and I work and I work on myself every day, whether it be through exercise, you know, um, whether it be, you know, writing my food plan down, making sure I have the food prepared. I, I do. all. You know what I mean? Like, I don't ask anybody to do anything that I haven't done before. Pretty much. Perfect. You know? Well, now now it sounds like you can ask people to do strength training. Speaking of exercise. <laughs> Well, tell you know, us, I, like I tell said, in, the process of string trading. Yeah. Like, like I, like I said, is that, um, you know, uh, initially we would never tell anyone to do that, but I will, I'll give you an example of a woman we have. She didn't, she didn't realize that addiction was a brain disease. Okay. She really didn't until she came to one of our challenges 
And she thought it was a moral issue. And this is a devout person, a prayerful, devout person. Okay. And um, quite overweight, quite overweight, could barely move. You know, I mean, she'd just be in the chair and, you know, maybe she'd move with a walker. She started walking with her granddaughter, like little by slow, inching in her driveway first or whatever. Anyway, she went on, I can't even remember how long a hike. I mean, rested and was able to make it back. I mean, she it blew her mind away. We get into talk. We actually talk because of Anna's experience with primal health and stuff about strength training and, and doing, you know, strength by body by science or Dr. Ben's, which is what I, the book that I have, I forget what it's called, something in 15 minutes or something. Cause I met him at low carb and I really liked the guy and I'm still reading that book. But um, the point is, is you don't start stuff like this right away. You really don't like this woman I was talking about. She wants to be able to get off the floor without holding on. She's been doing um, squats you know, first starting with a chair, I mean, you know, getting up off of a chair. I mean, I know I started getting up off of a chair with two huge styrofoam blocks. Okay. Now I do 15 getting off of a chair with nothing and I'm bored. You know what I mean? Like, like it's little by everything's little by slow folks, you know, like we don't ask you to do that. These are people who want to do this because they're, they're, they're losing weight. They're feeling healthier they're getting back into their lives and want more and want more. So that's where exercise comes in. Like we talk about gentle movement to begin with, getting out in nature. Let's get that oxytocin going. You know, let's get the vitamin D flowing. Let's let's use, like we're into a holistic approach. Um, you know, if you want to go to a program that's going to rah rah you and motivate you we are not the right place we you've got to want it and we'll help with the momentum we'll get you going okay in the right direction but you got to want to do it you know i can't make anyone do anything that's my belief okay just like i can't change you casey and you can't change me i can't change my kids i can't change anybody in my life I can change my perception of them. I can change how I feel about them. I can change myself to accept them, but I can't change you. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, specifically with the strength training, a lot of people have barriers and, and uh, excuse is probably a little bit strong of a word, but we tell ourselves things to keep us from, from progressing and doing things that we think okay. are going to be uncomfortable. So, so, you know, what was it like for you personally to realize I can strength train. I don't need a ton of equipment. I also don't need tons of time. I understand that this 15 minutes That's is going to be very uncomfortable, but, but everybody thinks like, Oh, I need to join a gym or I need to buy a whole bunch of stuff or right. I need to dedicate an hour a day, seven days a week or whatever. Like what, what things that. kind of surprised you about yeah, uh, strength training? Because, because, um, you know, I kept hearing Dr. Ben say in his lectures that I went to, that I, that I had gone to that, um, you only need 15 minutes twice a week. Well, I heard that and I was like, Oh, well, maybe I could do that. I mean, that was my first catch, you know, the first hook, so to speak. And then, um, and, and I mean, and I know, I know that I, I will be healthier and age more healthfully. I mean, I know some of the science, you know, um, I hear it enough, you know, you hear it, you, 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 you can't help but hear it, you know, I mean, movement is helpful, you know, this is a very specific type of movement, you know, because you got to really, you know, you got to tire your muscle out. And, and I hate pain. I mean, I, I told you that, and I knew it was going to be painful. And I knew I wasn't going to like it. But I'm doing it, folks, because I know the benefits I'm going to outweigh the 15 minutes of agony I might have twice a week. And it's really not agony. I, I need to say that too. It's really not because maybe I'm not going to my limit, but I don't even think you're supposed to because you told me go to an eight out of a 10. Don't, don't even go to, you know, I, I'm not trying to crush myself here, you know? And sometimes my, you know, cause I haven't figured it all out yet. It takes me longer. I should only be doing each exercise about 
a minute and a half, two minutes. Sometimes I know that I'm doing three because I haven't figured out like everything yet. You know what I mean? But what I like, and which is why I went to Casey, because I have a gym. I have wonderful people. My my husband sees a trainer. I've seen somebody before, you know, I I mean, I'm not talking about PTs. I've done that too, but I'm talking about trainers. Okay. And um, I decided I really wanted to do it in my home, which is why I asked Casey to help me because I wanted to him, see him to see my setup, my layout so that when I do it on my own, see, I don't want to run to a gym. I already go swimming at least three times a week. I mean, it's available to me, but I don't have the time, folks. I'm very busy. I work full time. I have grandchildren. I have a husband with issues. I, you know, here I am with you on a podcast. I mean, I'm busy, you know? So, you know, for me that to not leave my home and just say, okay, I'm going to go do my resistance training now, hun. I'll tell my husband. And, you know, and I shut the door on my equipment, you know, because I need the door for that, you know, and I do it. It's done. I mean, it's, it's not bad. Just so you know, folks, it's not bad. And I know that this is going to lead to my being stronger, my bones healthier, my muscles stronger. Okay. And I'm going to protect myself with age as I age. I'm already eating well. I know that, you know, but food isn't the only thing, which is why I said, you know, I, we haven't even talked about sleep. I mean, we talk about sleep on our platform. It's so important. We talk about meditation. We talk about prayer, you know, if that's for you, you know, we, I mean, I get up and I have my routine and it takes me a long time, but when I don't do it, I don't, I don't feel right. You know what I mean? Like I, my day doesn't go as well, usually, you know, so I get up, folks, I get up at five in the morning so I can get to the pool at eight o'clock by eight o'clock. Okay. And in that time, by the way, I have done my prayer, my meditation, my back exercises, stretching and strengthening. I've done my knee exercises and um, I've made my four salads for the day, two for my husband, two for me. He eats pretty much like I do. You know, I have lunches made for us. I've already served breakfast to him and me, you know, before I walk out the door, which is why I get up at that time. You know, my strength training, I do later in the day. I will, I, I don't, I can't fit it in then. But I, what I've done though, sometimes is there's certain exercises I do in the morning that if I don't really have time that morning and I know I'm going to do strength training, I'll blow off the strengthening in that area. Like I know enough. And because I know I'm going to do my strength training, my resistance training in the afternoon, so, you know, you, you get a feel for this. You get a clue. It's not just because I'm a PT, because believe me, that was not my bag. I'm a, I'm a respiratory, I'm a respiratory therapist too. So I'm a pulmonary specialist. So exercise wasn't my thing, so to speak. You know, getting people off ventilators was my thing. You know, that kind of thing where you, you certainly involve exercise too. You've got to, sure. you know, you, sure. you to be able to use the oxygen well in your body so that you can breathe, you know, yep. I mean, you know, there's so many layers to this, but I don't know. Did I answer your question? I mean, you don't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do this strength training thing. And like, I love seeing people like this woman I was talking about, you know, like she asks me now how my strength training is going, you know, like I'm, a, you know, like it's so, it's so cool in our platform, Casey, because people care about us because they know we really care about them and they in turn care about us. And we talk about, we're real people. We talk about, I talk about, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. And I got goaded into this and blah, 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 you know, <laughs> it's hysterical. It's hysterical. Like that's the kind of relationship we have on our platform. So that. anyway, I, you know, I, I, love I, I the people we serve, I do. I love food addicts, sugar addicts. I don't care what kind of addict you are. You know, we have magical brains. That's what Bitten always talks about. Um, we are the ones that, you know, we're going to remember where those berries were. If we were in the primal caveman days, we are the ones that would have remembered, oh, we're going by such and such. We can get some berries or some yep. nuts, you know, or, you know, we're getting low in food. We got to go out and, you know, get that saber-toothed tiger or whatever. 
you know, I mean, we are the ones, we, we are the ones that would be out there saving everybody. Okay. Yeah. But absolutely, we got to save ourselves first. And yeah. that's a problem with, with addicts is their people pleases. They give themselves away. This is part of the personality. And we help people learn that you got to be number one. I love it. Well, I'm so proud of you for demonstrating that not only with your food addiction, but also with starting strength training. Super proud that you kept it up. This has been such a fun conversation. I love chatting with you and I love your energy. You're definitely not a low energy person. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, love where this conversation went. I hope this is very hopeful and helpful for people. And they've gotten plenty of practical tips from this because it is very, very difficult out there. And the thought of doing crazy hard workouts or eating a certain way that feels really restrictive at first, understanding that the, those are things that are going to lead to your freedom. They feel restrictive, but they're actually just the opposite. I think it's so important. And your story is such a wonderful example of that, Judy. Where would you like people to go to find you and connect with you in your work? Okay. So if you go to sugarxglobal.com, Com. We have a very crummy website right now. We are building, we are rebuilding it. Okay. However, okay, there you can find free your crush your cravings in three simple steps. Okay. A booklet. All right. The other thing you might be interested in is that we have a craving crusher skills manual. So you can see, I didn't even talk about all the tools we have and, and, I don't like to call them worksheets. We actually call them growth sheets um, that you can, this gives you an example. It's for seven bucks. I mean, that's all it costs is $7 to get that, to give you an example of it, a taste of what we have. If you're interested in getting out of the food and that's all right now, go, it's $27, I think on the website to get out of the food system. You know, um, I did a stay out of the food system which is kind of an after to that, you know, of how, you know, once you stop, how do you stay stopped? You know, that's available in Evergreen. In other words, you can, it's, it's a video, little, little, you know, blurbs that you can take it in and, and progress as you want. Um, if you want to reach me personally, go to hello at sugarxglobal.com. Attention, Judy. Oh, and I didn't tell you, book a free call with us. You know, I'm um, Anna, Dave, or me will, you know, it's kind of like whoever's available for the time that you choose, okay, on Calendly, a 15 minute breakthrough call, just to tell us where you're at or questions you might want answered. We don't, we are not hard sell people at all. You know, it's not a call to uh, sell you anything. It's a call to answer your questions and maybe we're the right fit for you. And then maybe you'll come back and talk to me again. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So, you know, and people who usually come to those, it's because they have some kind of problem or they have some kind of question. And that's exactly what we're there for. You know, so yeah. those are a few things that I can tell you. And um, and I can't tell you what's down the road yet. Like we've, like I said, we just started this high performance coaching thing. And those are from people who graduated from the Recovery Accelerator Program. And, you know, but we have our basic circle membership which gets you on our platform, gets you to all the groups that we run. And there's about, I want to say between 12 and 15 a week. If you want to check us out, Dave runs a free group at 4 p.m. Thursdays afternoons, Eastern time. Okay. And um, I think that, um, you know, if you want to find out about that, maybe go and sign up for the free Crush Your Cravings thing. We'll have your email and you'll get a notification about that. But I mean, we do have one group that's free for around the world. Anybody can come, you know, Easy. it's a lot of fun, you know, so it gives you yeah. a taste of, of us and who we are. Plus, plus we help people that, you know, we have people in other programs who come and that's okay. That's yeah. okay. You know, we don't care. We don't care. The more the merrier, you know, Love it. one addict serving another addict does more than anything because you know what we we talk about having a, a bottle casey and there's a label on the outside and the addicts in the inside we can't read our own label we can't we need another person on the outside another addict to tell us what's going on yeah that's it's a really good analogy it's a really good analogy what, that's the kind of stuff we do i mean we just, i love it we we do i'm telling you we do lots of great stuff 
Yeah, you know, I love your work. So much fun. We have so much fun. Yeah, you know, I can definitely you. tell. I was so grateful to be able to interview all three of you and get all of your individual flavors and all of this. And yeah, you guys do offer so much. There's so much out there. Um, on our end, for sure, we will pay you a commission if anybody signs up for personal training with me. I will send you a check for 20 bucks every time. Um, <laughs> I do appreciate the kind words. And thank you so much for sharing your <laughs> experiences with that. I think that would be very helpful for people. And Judy, it's always just such a joy to chat with you. Thank you so very much for all of your amazing work. And thank you for taking time out of your busy life to be on our show today. We really appreciate you. And thank you for having me again and goading me to stop. <laughs> I probably still would be stuck if you hadn't goaded me to start. Good. Remember Good. that, folks. You just need, you know, to get the momentum going. That's yep. what you need. Yep. I love that. Well, thank you again, Judy, for appearing on our show today. We just really, really appreciate you. And this has been another episode of Boundless Body Radio.